Do you like to shoot stuff? Maybe you didn't fit in anywhere in the traditional crew role system with Starfinder. Maybe it's a bit of both. Today we're talking about the gunner. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Maple Table. My name's Nathaniel. This is a channel where we discuss role-playing games such as Starfinder and Werewolf the Apocalypse. So if that's something you're into, love to have you hit that subscribe button. This is part four of a multiple part series that we've been doing around spaceship combat. And it's uh, still got a few more parts to come. You can check out the other videos I did on the other roles up here. For gunners, one of the most important things you're gonna to have to coordinate with is your pilot. The reason for this is because of the weapon arcs. As you can see from this diagram right over here, your weapons will only be able to fire in a specific direction depending on where they're mounted on your ship. So having your pilot line you up in the proper space and the proper direction is going to be very, very important. The only exception to this would be for turret weapons, and that's because, as the name suggests, they can pivot and they're not stuck to firing in one direction. As a gunner, you only get four options for your firing modes. The first and the most commonly used one will be just fire a weapon, the second one is a little bit more dramatic, although harder to do. You can actually fire all the ship's weapons at once while taking a massive penalty to do it. Fire everything! At level six, notice I said level six and not rank six of some skill. At level six, the gunner is able to make an action called the broadside and basically allows you to fire all weapons in one arc, including turret weapons, at less of a penalty than if they were to just fire everything. And of course, the last one that the gunner can do at level 12 is a precise target, and this one will have a higher chance to damage a critical system, potentially multiple system failures. As the gunner, you're gonna need to know how to do your skill check. And this one's a bit involved, as you can see from this quadratic equation right here. So your gunnery check is gonna be made by rolling a d20, obviously. Then you get to add either your base attack bonus or the amount of ranks you have in piloting, whichever is greater then your dex modifier, then any bonuses from the computer systems, then any bonuses from the captain or the science officer that you get, and then any range penalty if you're going outside of the firing bands of your weapons. Simple, right? This next part is for the dungeon masters or storytellers, however, whatever title you go by. And it's gonna be a little bit more math heavy, but it's how you do the opposing check, the AC check for your players who have just shot at your bad guys. Or maybe they were good guys, I don't know. Once your players have made their attack check and they've come up with that final number, you now have to know what your bad guy's armor check is going to be. So you're gonna start off with your armor check of 10. That's the same across everything. Then you're going to add that NPC's ranks in piloting skill, plus any armor bonus from the ship. Then add any modifiers based on the ship's size. And then finally, any bonuses or penalties from failed stunt actions or ship maneuvers. For the most part, this is gonna be a number that you know well in advance, aside from any of the up or down modifiers from this. So it should come out with just a little bit of planning. This number should be somewhat easy to arrive at. And hopefully you're not doing this on the fly. The last thing on here is gonna be for target locking. This is for turret and missile weapons more so missile weapons, and it will have this kind of a check. What this is for is if you fire a missile weapon and it doesn't hit, it has the opportunity to turn around and find its target. Something you need to know about, probably not going to come up in every game. Now we've done all these wonderful checks, you fired your weapons and they hit, hopefully. How do we calculate damage? It's pretty easy. Your starship will actually have a character sheet and I suggest you use one and write down everything. Your weapons will have the same way to calculate damage as they always do. There'll be a certain number of dice to roll and you just roll it and deal that much damage. How that damage is applied is to shields first, then hull points. Shields have four quadrants. There's the front, back, and then the two sides. The total number of shield points needs to be evenly divided between each of the four sides of the ship. 
at least as evenly as possible. Once those shield points are gone in that specific quarter of the ship, if you keep firing at it, then that's when you start doing damage to the hull. Once you start doing damage to the hull, you can start doing critical system damage. Basically how this works is for every 20 points of hull damage you do, cumulative, doesn't have to all happen in one attack, it can happen in multiple attacks, but for every 20 points of damage you do, there is a critical system failure, and you would roll on this table over here and find out what system is damaged. Interesting to note, if you reduce an enemy ship to zero hit points, that doesn't mean that it's destroyed and it blows up. What that means is that ship is now derelict. It basically doesn't function, and the crew aboard, unless something specific has happened with a system failure, the crew will continue to live on that starship. It just means that starship can't move. Now, if you take out the life support system, for example, then the crew could suffocate and die, but just because you brought it to zero hit points does not mean that the ship explodes. If you fire on a ship that does have zero hit points, you can do more critical damage, although I would argue as the DM, if you're tr actively trying to blow it up, blow it up. If you're running something that's a little bit more space pirate, then I would encourage using this mechanic for your players. It's all simple, right? If you're interested in learning a bit more about Starship Combat and how it operates and having it explained to you in simple, easy to understand terms, then please click this playlist over here as that will continue on the series. And up here, YouTube has picked a best video for you. Love to have you hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. My name's Nathaniel. You've been watching The Maple Table. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.